Well, I have before you a short presentation from the 2015 Farmer's Market Year-End Report. And I just wanted to highlight this is last year's poster. And currently there's a call for artists for the 2016 poster. So that's active right now. And these two photographs were done by Zach, our um, sound guy in the back, yeah, who also works at the cool. market. Mm -hmm. And he's a very good photographer and video person. So yay, Zach. Mm. So I like to list the partnerships that um, are in the community that help out with the market because um, there's a lot of people that are involved with the market and they don't always get credit for being involved with the market. And I highlight the Moscow Pullman Daily News because they always list the music for the weekend and any special events that are in the market. So they accept our press releases and put them into print. So it's very valuable to us. And then um, KRFP, NWPR, um, KUO, um, KUOI, the University of Idaho Radio, they're very good at um, promoting the event as well. And then Backyard Harvest um, is our facilitator for EBT, so they're very important. <coughs> um, we have several AmeriCorps that work with the market, uh, Jessica Brierly and Adam Lane. And then just recently, the help with the University of Idaho Photo Services to take the um, shots of the market on Main Street. Um, this last year, we were voted number one market in the state of Idaho by um, Farmland Trust, which is a national group, and we decided to celebrate because that was five years in a row that we were nominated number one. Um, we were also nominated one of the top 25 farmers markets in the nation. And this was a kind of a big deal, and we kind of, we've been going along, and finally we hit this fifth year mark. And I said, it's time to celebrate. So the mayor gave an opening speech at 8 o'clock in the morning, and uh, Gritman Medical Center made 100 cupcakes with number one mm -hmm. on the top, and we chose to celebrate. So we're pretty proud of this. We had the High Five Passport program this last summer. Um, this is our second year. And you can see from the top, we had over 1,324 participants. And these are all little kids. And the photograph in the right hand corner there um, kind of explains tasting. And if it's kind of like a dot survey for little people. But do they like turnips? Do they not like turnips? So it was a very successful program, and we listed the volunteers that helped with the program, whether it was cooking classes, activity class to classes, or tasting classes. And I always list the volunteer, the value of volunteers on a national level, and then also the state of Idaho um, average. So this was our day sheet. And this was our first introductory year using a day sheet at the market. This year we're going to expand on using the day sheet. We'll actually have a um, iPad at the market um, and we'll be able to calibrate numbers um, on site as we go through um, 26 weeks of market days. So these are just some uh, day statistics from the market and I've been asked about the, the figure, the 1,241. So Jim Bolin, these are possible 99 spaces per day that were utilized through the course of 27 market days. So the total of spaces that were used and allocated on Main Street to seasoned vendors. The rest of the numbers are walk-on spaces that were allocated, whether they were full spaces, shared spaces, uh, table spaces, which is just a three by three, uh, child vendors that participated in the market, and then per performance artists, um, music buskers, and the like. So we're going to be improving on this uh, day sheet. We're meeting, it's on our agenda for the Farmers Market Commission meeting this week. We're looking at different samples from other um, markets nationally and how they're calibrating. Um, so this is just another way to look at the music on Friendship Square. We have two time slots, 9.30 to 
our volunteer non-paid, 11.30 to 1, our paid performances. So we had 25 non-paid, 26 paid. We had the Tai Chi from the Confucius Institute in the market on the first Saturday of every month for six months. So that was a great addition as well. So then when you go into volunteers, this is where the AmeriCorps um, is very important to us in the market because Jessica Briarly, as Amanda Argona did, um, reaches out to the community and engages commission members to be in the market. So various commissions have been already signed up for the 2016 market season. Um, we have the High Five Kids program. We have chefs in the market coming as well. Um, we have the U of I Extension and Master Gardeners. Um, Latah County Human Rights Day. Um, we're working with Migratory Bird Day. And then uh, we have the Great Moscow Food Drive. Um, we're working on that right now. And also working with Canine Companions. So all of these people are volunteering to be in the market as well. So um, this is some of our marketing that um, we probably reduced our marketing quite a bit in 2015. You can see the hard cost was 1586.30. In 2014, the cost was 6291.31. And that, Walter's not here to take credit for this, but that was his over the street banners. The construction of the poles, the hardware, the rigging, and then the physical banners themselves was quite costly, but that's done. So then we go into social media, and this is primarily what we rely on now for networking and marketing in the market. Um, DJ updated some of these stats today. We're now up to 3,696 fans, friends, on um, the Farmer's Market Facebook site. And then we do weekly posts. We post even during the winter what's happening with market vendors, uh, the growing season, starting seeds, um, what the vendors are doing. And then the Twitter feed is connected to the Facebook, and so the market manager um, does Twitter feeds on the day of at the market. And then we rely on some other social media sites. Those are listed on the bottom. We do get a lot of Visit Idaho um, with the Department of Commerce. We get a lot of hits off of the state site as well. So this last year, we were um, helped out the state. Um, they just passed this legislation to update the cottage food laws in the state of Idaho. And we held three meetings here in this room um, with um, Patrick Guzzel. And uh, that legislature, legislative action just took place in January just to update the Idaho food code. So we use this facility in this room for our vendors and various people in the public to come in and find out about the food code. This is our commission, and we have one commissioner member in the room right now, David Pierce. And he's right over there with his red and black hat. So what's really important is what the commission does. We have an hour and a half meeting this week on Wednesday. Then we'll have another meeting on the 23rd of March to look at fees for the fee resolution for the 2017 budget. But some of the things that the Farmer's Market Commission does besides meeting is they do on-site farm visits. They have subcommittees that work on policy work. Um, we're working with Rod right now with policy changes for the 16th season. And then they actually volunteer in the market on um, certain market days with setup and takedown. Um, they helped a lot with the Need Feed Seed survey. They're always there to help with cooking demos, and um, so they provide a lot of service to the city. So I just added up the hours that they spent and put a value to their hours um, in volunteer time in Idaho. So this commission does a lot of work, and they deserve a lot of credit. This is a snapshot of doing annual um, vendor site visits. This year it took us pretty long and far, and you can see Dr. Pierce in the field there. They went as far away as Stan Stanford, Oregon for the Berry Guy, um, Akeley Farms. They went to Wapato for the Boothmans, Calhouns. Also went to Tonemaker Hill Farm in Royal City, 
And then there's a sn- small sh- snapshot there of woodland apiaries. And we did another honey vendor as well in St. Mary's. So um, we do go out and do farm inspections, check on product, um, ask a lot of questions, and gather a lot of information. And that's time well spent. Um, this is just a season snapshot of who's in the market and what our profile is of our vendors. Um, just to give you a percentage-wise, um, we're very proud to say that you know, in seasoned vendors, we're still pretty high with produce and nursery. So we can still consider ourselves a farmer's market. I like to emphasize that. It's not a flea market. It's not a craft market. Um, it's not an art market. It is a farmer's market. So we're very proud of that. Um, this is your EBT numbers from Backyard Harvest. Um, you can see the, the numbers went down a little bit in 2015. Um, hopefully we'll boost that up again. Um, Backyard Harvest had a grant for double up bucks, so there was matching numbers going out, and that equated to an additional $4,847 that um, matched the EBT. So if you wanted to spend $10 in EBT, you, they would match it up to 20. So that was very valuable. That was a Finney grant. 